wanted to try to, to do this video again um, because I just did this entire video and it was 40 minutes long and that's just too long for me. So I'm going to try to go through this stuff very quickly. And um, you can also push those three little buttons, <laughs> those three little dots, and speed this video up. Okay, so I'm going to try to have pictures throughout this video and I'm also going to try to have all the links and more information in the description box below. So. This video is going to be about our first quarter of homeschool and also some things that we've done um, as a family since school has started, okay? Um, I got way too much detail a while ago, so I'm going to try to just do this quickly and just go over it. So I'm sorry if I'm just, you know, going through. <laughs> sorry. Um, but before I do, I want to say that today is Veterans Day. And so if you are a veteran and or mil active military, if you have served in the past, are serving right now, um, or you're in boot camp because you will be serving, thank you for your service. We do greatly appreciate it as a nation. And I know that as a nation, we don't show it enough, um, but we do thank you. Um, and also for your families, your children, wives, husbands, parents, sisters, brothers, um, thank you for all the sacrifices you have made too, because it is, I know that it's not easy. So thank you for that. Okay, so I'll say some things that we've done as a family since the first quarter has started. Okay, first, next, <laughs> if I keep messing with my hair, I'm sorry, I don't normally do that, but it's driving me crazy. It's just, it's at this stage to where you can't do anything with it and it looks good. So I'm getting it cut in a couple weeks. But right now, these are where my bangs, these are my, what well, used to be my bangs, and anyway, okay, so, um, so since school has started, um, like the first, I think, I guess the week before school officially started, my husband was on vacation for a week, um, we spent a couple days and went, went off for a couple days, um, as a family, we had a really good time with that, um, I can't tell you where, because, you know, don't want you to know exactly where we are. <laughs> but anyway, we had a good time. And then um, the rest of the time, while, while he was on vacation, we just stayed home and we did like little day trips. Like one day, we were gone the entire day and we never even got 45 minutes away from home. Um, but what we, did, uh, what we did is we like made a huge circle around where we live and we hit all kinds of flea markets and specialty stores and anyway. I love that kind of thing. So that was fun. Um, we've been fishing two or three times. Uh, a circus came to town, which was like an old fashioned, you know, a big tent circus. Um, even the acts were old fashioned. So it was really neat to see, you know, like a real old fashioned circus. Um, my oldest had a birthday party. So she is now 14. <sighs> they grow up so fast. Um, also, we have attended birthday parties um, every Saturday in September and October was, you know, we had something to do, some place to be, but they were all good things. You know, like there's been so many local, uh, different community, different towns in the area, fall festivals. Um, there's just a lot of stuff to do up here um, that's just, you know, good family fun. So, and so we've definitely taken advantage of that. Um, we have been to um, a cave. We've been to a lot of caves um, because, you know, some people, they like to go like to the beach on vacation or Disney World, which we've never been, have absolutely no desire to go. Um, but anyway, for me personally, I like to go like um, national parks, state parks, you know, out hiking in the woods um, or just walk in our own woods. Oh, I love that. Um, to me, that's just so peaceful, calming, and relaxing, and, you know, so, so going on cave, cave tours is another thing, um, but we've been on a lot of cave tours, and so we went on this one, and it was just really, really good. It was probably either the, the best or the second best I've been on. Um, the kids really enjoyed it as well, and then after that tour was over, we, uh, we stayed and we listened to their bat program and learned a lot about bats, so that was really nice. Um, let's see. We we went to an air show. Um, it was really, really good. And again, I can't really tell you where it's at. Sorry. But um, but it was 
really good. We've been to an air show before. This one was, and they, it's been good before, but this one was just, I can't even describe it. It was just spectacular. Um, uh, a couple of the pilots, they did all kinds of just tricks and just dangerous stuff. <laughs> and, um, but it was, it was fascinating. But the best part of it was um, there was a plane that was really there in World War II. And it was on display. Well, that's pretty neat, you know, seeing a piece of history. And oh, and they also had it open to where you could like go inside um, and see all parts of it. That was that was nice. But it's really neat seeing a piece of history. But not only was it just sitting there to where you could see it, what was better than that was they actually flew it. Um, it made so many passes around us, and just actually seeing it flying in the air kind of gave you goosebumps, you know, because you're like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, what did they, what, how did they feel, you know, when they saw that deer in World War II, and just, it was a huge plane. <laughs> it was just, I don't know, it, the whole, it was just, it was worth going to. Um, also, one of the most exciting things, we went to a Trump rally, and um, we took the girls, and they had a great time. Uh, there were a few protesters, um, but they were they weren't loud, they weren't violent or anything. They just kind of stayed in their own little group. Um, the whole thing was just very it was very you know calm, nice, um, smooth flowing. Okay, so we had to wait in line for like nearly four hours, and I didn't want to go into detail, but I kind of have to on this one because it was just a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> you know, like. You know, we were joking. We were like, you know, here we are driving these these many hours to go see Trump, you know, or just the hopes of seeing Trump. And we wouldn't even drive across town to see Obama. <laughs> but anyway, um, anyhow, um, okay, so like we waited in line for nearly four hours and we had to park our car um, six blocks away. And so we were in line and from, and the entire time we were in line, we could see the building that we were going to go into and one building had the line wrapped around it three times but um, from the building until where we had started we had to walk 11 blocks you know because it was just like you know snaked among all these blocks and buildings to get to the actual building itself but I don't know how many blocks other people had to walk because, you know, like I said, we were there um, in line for about four hours and people just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And there were thousands of people behind us. Um, but once we got in there, I don't, I guess we were just, I guess God just gave us a seat because like my back was just killing me. Um, but we were able to find a seat and the, it was just like, there were, no seats left. The whole floor was just flooded with people um, outside because no one else could get in. I mean, it was just even the hallways, the whole building inside was just flooded with people. The corridors and people were just trying to sneak a peek and everything. Um, but the building itself was just packed. So there were literally thousands of people still outside that never even got to go into the door. But instead, you know, they, they had to watch it on the big, um, big screen they had outside. Um, so we had to go through these like walkthrough body scanners and then we had to go through the handheld scanners. We had to be um, inspected by uh, FBI, TSA, and then I think a local cop, I can't remember, some other, uh, you know, enforcement agency. Uh, anyhow, it was just, it was so neat, just, just so neat. And we had to, you know, put our umbrellas down. We were in line, it was like raining off and on, but we couldn't take our umbrellas in. Um, and so, like, the whole, you know, where you walk in, the whole thing was just, like, deep and littered with umbrellas. There were just thousands and thousands of umbrellas. But when we were done and we made our way out, we found three of our four umbrellas. So, that was pretty good. Okay. So, um, my girls are taking uh, homeschool co-op classes three hours each week. My oldest is taking sign language. And she is learning so much. Like, even when we're home, you know, she's always doing these signs. I'm like, what, what? And, you know, if I stop, I'll know what she's saying because, you know, she's been teaching me too. But I'm like, just talk. I don't have time for this. <laughs> but, um, 
But anyway, so she's learning sign language. She's taking science from a biblical perspective. And she's also taking mixed media art. And I'll try to put a picture in here um, of a couple of the art pieces that she has done. Um, she's learning so much. My youngest is taking math and, la math and language arts games. Um, she's also taking geography of Alaska and reader's theater. She is loving the Reader's Theater class because she um, she likes drama type stuff. Um, she likes, you know, writing stories, writing skits, making movies, um, you know, writing plays. She loves that stuff. And so what's really neat is that um, she had, the teacher had asked them to write a play for Thanksgiving. So all the kids wrote a play. They brought them in. The class chose um, my youngest. They chose her play. So this, this next week, this upcoming week, they will be doing her play, and they'll be acting it out for the first graders. So yesterday, I had to make her a pilgrim apron and a pilgrim bonnet, and I'll try to put pictures here if I can. Um, anyway, so that's pretty neat. What else? Um, okay, so I would like to talk more about what I'm about to say next, but because of time limit, I'll just say it. Um, I just won't get into the detail. Something else that we have done is um, my oldest and I, we went to um, a church youth conference and we camped out there um, from Friday to Sunday this last weekend. Um, anyway, at first I didn't want to go. I was really dreading it. I've never been to anything like that in my life. Neither has she, which is why I went because, you know, they're to protect her, right? Um, anyhow, however, in the end, I'm glad I went. It was a great experience and, you know, it got me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> um, but I do recommend, if you guys have never been, I do recommend you going. Um, I still don't know how I feel about it because I'd never experienced anything like that before, but it was, it was worth going to. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so... Deer season started yesterday. Well, firearms deer season started yesterday. So my husband and my oldest, they went hunting yesterday, and that's where they're at right now. So they are gone. I am here making this video. My youngest is downstairs writing her third short story for this quarter. I don't tell her to write a story. She just, she wants to write stories all the time. She wants to write stories, and she makes movies and picture movies, and she... Um, anyway, she just loves that sort of thing. But for her, for her, um, her filming, like her picture movies and, uh, you know, like little actual, uh, videos that she puts together, um, she uses the app Cy Cyberlink Power Director and she's learning a lot from that. She, she loves the whole editing part of that. Um, and her short stories, when I say short, um, they range between 11 to like 30 something pages long. And she, she's got a pretty good talent for that, I think. Um, for her age anyway, I think. And she really enjoys that. Um, let's see. The girls are practicing for their Christmas play. So they have that. Um, I have, this quarter I have canned um, apple pie filling, apple sauce, countless jars of apple jelly, and salsa, um, so I've done a lot of canning. I have been um, harvesting wild plants and drying them, you know, to store for this winter. I've also been preparing um, a couple uh, cold and flu remedies for this, you know, upcoming season as well. The other day we had two inches of snow. That was a surprise and it was beautiful. And again, I'll try to put pictures here. Um, so when we woke up and we had that, my girls, they spent the whole day outside sledding. Cause I think I told you before we have, you know, our yard is sloped and hilled. And so they spent the day outside sledding. <laughs> they enjoyed that. Um, a couple weeks ago we had closed our pool. Um, so that's all done, and if you want to see, I'll try to put a card up here or in the description box. Um, I have two videos about, you know, the pool we chose and why, how we maintain it, and how we closed it. So if you're interested in that. Girls are over, like here in Missouri for homeschooling, we have to have, each child has to have a thousand hours at least 
of hours for the school year. Um, my girls have already, they already have over 500. And you may be thinking, well, how can you get, you know, over halfway in only the first quarter? Well, the reason is because um, I start counting hours July 1st, and I stop counting June 30th. That's how our school year runs, July 1st through June 30th. However, we don't start doing the actual book work until August normally, but this was September when we started this year. But anyway, um, <clears throat> sorry, I had to get a drink. <laughs> okay, um, okay, back to the hours. Oh, so yes, I start counting um, all the hours I can count um, starting July 1st. But yeah, the book work, we don't actually start the book work until um, August. Anyhow, but yeah, this year it was like September, the first part of September before we officially started school. Anyhow, um, so yeah, that, that's how, that's how we get the hours. Um, my youngest has read 70 books so far, um, since, since school has started. And my youngest, and I don't mean like little itty bitty baby books or chapter books, you know, I'm talking like, you know, normal average size books for her age. This is a sixth grade and up book. Um, you know, books this size. This has like 150 pages. So she's read, you know, 70 books about like this. Um, and here's another one, another series that they're working on. Um, this is the Sugar Creek Gang. It's a Christian series about a group of friends that are boys. It's a really good series. Um, Where's the other one? Here it is. And this is another series that they are working on. Nancy Drew. It's another mystery series. Anyway, so books about like that, those sizes. So yeah, she's read 70. My oldest has read um, 44 books. Um, of course, hers are, um, you know, bigger, uh, longer. And not only that, she... Uh, <laughs> Her schoolwork also is longer. It takes more hours a day, a couple more hours a day than my youngest does. So she doesn't have as much free time. Um, however, I feel like I'm just probably going to be skipping all over the place, but I'll, I'll try. Okay, so my kids are, they always, they are very, very crafty. And they always have some kind of craft going on. Always. Um, here is my oldest, her current craft. Um, she started this yesterday. She is making uh, homemade snowshoes. Uh, she's not done. She told me earlier all the stuff she has left to do on them, but so she's excited about that. <coughs> Here's another thing she made. Um, this is just a pink pearl eraser, and she, um, you know, what's the word? She just cut out a horse design. This is a horse. So she just drew an outline of a horse like she wanted and then just took, I don't know what she took, an X-Acto knife maybe, and just cut it out and now she has a stamp. So, but she's, they're both very, very crafty. Okay. So, what else? Okay, about once a week, um, they go over to the neighbors and um, they visit their miniature horses and their donkey. So they really, really have been enjoying that. Um, okay, something else that they do is where we used to live, their best friends still live there, of course. And so like one way that they can still work together is they use the app Google Docs. And so they co-write a story. Um, so they're, you know, that that's pretty neat that because when when there's um, internet hooked up to their tablet, which is what they use. So when I, I give them internet on it, um, if they're both on it at the same time, you know, their friend down there and my oldest up here and my youngest up here, they can actually see their friend typing something, you know, and they can type. And anyway, it's pretty neat. So they are working on a story, um, the two older girls and the two younger girls. So, uh, so that's great. You know, that's great to learn the electronics. That's great for their, you know, for still being able to communicate. And that's also great for, um, you know, language, right? You know, for their grammar, their punctuation skills um, by editing it. So that that's just a really neat, neat thing that they really enjoy. 
So, um, I always read, I always do a read aloud in the evening after my husband comes home. So, um, you know, we've been doing this for so many years and this is the book that, um, we finished. This is, a, a series by Rush Limbaugh. I think he has like four or five of these books. Um, this particular one, this is the first one, Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims. Um, this is a, a good book. Um, it's very, it's informative. It's, it's entertaining. The horse, Liberty, he can talk and he's pretty funny. Um, my girls, they just cracked up a lot. They, they like this book. Um, I liked it. My husband enjoyed it too. So, um, so they're telling me we need to go and get the next one. So, so that was our read aloud as a family. Um, okay. So I showed you that I got, um, each kid, the nature notebook from the good and beautiful, because I personally did not like the looks of simply Charlotte Mason's nature notebook. I just, I know, but I just didn't like it. I liked this one better, you know, so this is my, um, my youngest, just show you a few pages here that, uh, she's been doing. Um, so this actually, you know, both of them, they both, they each have their own and they both, um, you know, do this once or twice a week, maybe, um, they like it. They had to make a, a bird out of some leaves. Anyway, there's all kinds of little fun stuff in here that they do and they like that. They usually take it outside and they'll do it. Okay, so their art book, I showed you that I bought them um, mixed media. It's thick, durable paper that can be used for anything. Um, so here's just some pages. Um, this is my youngest, fifth grader. She, um, this is the Wren Bird. So this book is to be used only for Bible journaling, the art in their language arts, and then science. So the, um, the bird pictures, of course, these are for her science. Um, this was for her, her actual art lesson. She had to learn about chalk pastels. Um, we've got some Bible journaling in here. When Paul was in prison, the books that he wrote while he was in prison, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Um, there's another one in here I just want to show you. Here's a perspective drawing that she did. Um, and here's a, here's a Bible journaling, you know, how to treat others. And then, like, uh, she wrote, holding a grudge is like carrying, carrying around a big weight. You can see these flowers here, they're carrying big weights around. <laughs> but anyway, um, so those are just some of the things. So that's going well. Um, I had showed you in my curriculum choices, and I'll try to put a card up here or a link down there, that a professor's guide to writing essays and the mastering five paragraph essay. I had mentioned that I bought these just to have, just as reference or resource, or you know, if you really needed to use them, um, you know, just to have to help learn more about essays. And um, because you know, both girls they, they need to work on that a little bit more. Um, my oldest, especially with her being in eighth grade. And so last month, we we did a few lessons, the first few lessons out of this one and um, a few lessons out of this one. But what I wanted to say about bringing these up is that these two, um, the lessons that we did on each of these, I lined them up to where they covered the same content. You know, like like a, a thesis statement, a topic sentence, uh, an outline, I think, um, something else. Anyway, but I lined them up to where it was about the same topic, but we could use both books to learn more, you know, because the authors, you know, are different, of course. And this one comes with handouts that you can print out um, that just that just really help. Um, but I recommend these two. Um, I really do because they have helped my girls and not only them, but me as well um, to not see essays as something scary. 
you know, and, oh, you know, I just can't do it. But instead to see that they're actually really easy. I mean, it, it, it says an essay is basically just an expanded paragraph and they're right. Um, I, I better not go into detail anyway, but they, th these two books together, they basically take the fear out of the word essay. Okay. So, um, so those two books are good and we recommend those. Um, two or three years ago, I showed you that uh, these two books, um, this is a Christian series written by Susan K. Marlowe about a girl, Andy, and her family, her life, and her love of horses, okay? These books, um, this first series is Circle C Beginnings, and these are for like ages six through eight. I bought them two or three years ago. The girls loved them. I never bought the rest. There's like six in this series. Um, I just never got around to buying them. They've asked me so many times, but I just haven't. Anyway, well, then there's another series, I think, Circle C Adventures, maybe. And then there may even be another series. I don't know. But the last series is Circle C Milestones. And this is the same girl. And there are four books in this series, also by Susan King Marlowe. And this, um, I think she's like 15 when the book starts out, which would be this one. And then I think in the last one, she gets married. But anyway. Um... But these series, this whole series, this is just really good. You know, it's it's Christian. Um, it's girl and her love of horses. It's just a really really great series. Um, <laughs> I, I bought these for my oldest for her birthday. Um, hang on. Sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> anyway, so I bought these for my oldest for her birthday, and um. She read these within a week. Um, she absolutely loved them. Um, you know, as she was reading them, she was telling me all about them. And uh, so, and even my youngest, she's like, well, I don't have to read them because, you know, they'll just tell me all about them. So now I know. <laughs> um, but I was actually surprised that there was some pretty dangerous situations in here. I mean, pretty dangerous. And I was like, wow, I, I really can't believe that that's in there. But... You know, it, it's okay. But what I want to say, the reason I brought these out is because it doesn't matter. It's the same author. And it doesn't matter if you go with the, the youngest um, series or the oldest series. On Susan K. Marlowe's website, and I'll try to have a link below, but on her website, for each book, each book, she has a um, lap book you can buy. Or she has, I think it's called a literature study guide for free, that you can download for free. And there's dozens and dozens. I think the one that I downloaded and printed out for the older book, I think it was like 140 pages. Um, and it's free. Uh, anyhow, but the literature study guide, what it does is it just, well, it's a literature study guide. I mean, it's literature study. There's vocabulary words, there's crossword puzzles. Um, there's like fill in the blank. There's some history in there. There's coloring pictures. There's in the older series, there's even some Spanish to English words. It's just a great, great um, literature study guide. <laughs> um, anyhow, but the reason I brought it up is because two or three years ago, when we read these books, I printed them off and the girls loved the study guides. Well, I bought these for my, for my oldest just for her birthday. So not really for school. But I was thinking, hey, you know, if I can get her to do some extra work, you know, and, and uh, you know, help out, then okay. So I went ahead and I printed off, I think, about 30 pages of the literature study guide for one of these books. And I gave it to her. I said, here, you know, do it if you want to. She did it. Not only did she do it, she actually asked me. She said, was there any more pages? And I said, yeah. And she said, can you print those off? And I said, Okay. And she said, do they have that study guide for every book? And I said, yeah. She said, can you print all those pages off for all the books for me? I said, you're asking me for more work? She's like, I love those pages. So you guys might want to check into those. Now, another thing, Susan K. Marlowe, these are for girls. Well, boys could read, could read them too, of course. But she also has a series for boys, you know, from the youngest, like six to eight, all the way up to teenager, young adult, Okay. So, Boys and Girls Christian Book Series down below. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to show you is 
this kind of goes back to family thing here. Um, you know, like we'll watch, we as a family, we don't, we've never been big TV people, especially me anyway. Um, but Friday nights, you know, we watched Last Man Standing. Um, I think that's it. We'll watch Andy Griffith. Um, I guess that's about it. We watch Andy Griffith, Last Man Standing. Well, that's it that we watch on a regular basis. So, anyhow. Um, so, you know, we, we read aloud. Um, well, I read out loud as a family. Plus, we also play board games or card games. And I'm going to go over some board and card games with you. Um, the ones I'm going to show you are the ones we, we play most often. Okay, we have a bunch of them over there and downstairs. Um, I probably need to get rid of them, but I really don't want to because I like them, but we don't play with them. This is the one, this is the stack that we play with on a regular basis. Okay, so the first one here is Children's Bible Trivia. Okay, um, if you guys want to know more about any of these games, just ask and I'll open it up and do a video just on the game. But for the sake of time, I can't do that in this video. Okay, but... Um, just quickly, there are, there's over 1,000 questions about the Bible in these cards. Okay, so that's pretty neat. So you learn. Okay, another game, you can see this is really well loved, <laughs> is um, Trouble. We, we love this game. Um, we lost one of the, one of the pegs. We lost one of the pegs. So instead, we're using a marble in its place. Um, jumbling towers. We have fun with that. You can see this one's really well loved as well. Guess who? This game, this game, like, it doesn't even get put away. I mean, it's just, it's always out because what's the point of putting it away when that day or the next day you're going to be playing with it again? So, um, so yeah, so we play those games a lot. Um, Uno, um, we play this. Actually, um, my youngest, she got a little free, a small pack about this big of Uno cards at Arby's last year. And we play with those a lot. Well, over the weekend, while me and my oldest was on the church camping trip, my youngest was with her daddy, of course. And so, you know they went and they bought uno cards and they ate out and all kinds of stuff but anyway so now we don't have those little bitty cards now we have the full size deck so we play uno a lot um these are regular playing cards you know these actually sit on our dining room table um me and my husband we play rummy several 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 um, times a week. I always win. Okay, okay, I don't always win. I win like 95 out of 100. Alright. Um, so we play that a lot. Also, me and my girls will play that. Um, sometimes we'll play Go Fish with them. Um, sometimes, sometimes we'll play War with them. Anyway, so that's, those are some games that we really like. Here's another game. This one's newer. Um, we've only played it about four times, I think. It, it can be kind of long. It just really depends. But this is Wildcraft. This is an herbal adventure game. And I really like this game. Um, but if you're into herbs, you know, using plants medicinally, and you have young kids, and you want to get them interested in doing that, I recommend that game. All right, the last game I'm going to show isn't so much, <clears throat> sorry, isn't so much a family game. This is just one um, that we'll play like once or twice a week, me and the girls, um, just for math. You know, um, we don't do it in place of math. We, we just do it as a fun little, you know, math review. Uh, this is for, this covers addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So it's, it's fun. We enjoy it. All right. That is the end of 
my video and I am 36 minutes in so I did not beat it very much. Darn. <laughs> Anyhow, um, if you want to see any of this stuff close up or learn more about it, um, I'll have links in the description box below or cards up here if I can. Um, and also, you know, if you have any questions, just ask. Um, if you're wanting to see a, something, you know, closer, let me know and I'll try to, try to do a video on it for you. So thank you for watching and have a great week. Bye.